quick question. Uh, when you're calling people back, you're calling the, the A leads first and then the B leads and then the C leads? Yep, yep. All right, cool. I only had about, I had like six A leads of, actually, it was like four A leads. Um, then the majority of the B leads were just, it was a blank voicemail, you know? They just they didn't actually leave a voicemail, but you had their number there, and it was like two seconds of silence. And then, of course, when I called the last people, that was, please take me off the list. I'm not interested. I called those guys last. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool, cool. And with the A-leads, uh, the people that uh, were a little bit iffy and they're like, oh, well, you know, not sure if I'm going to sell it up, uh, sell my house, uh, make sure you put them in your Google Calendar or whatever calendar system you use uh, to, to follow up with them, uh, irregardless of the, the letter, okay? So follow up. Right. Every what did you say, what, uh, two weeks? Uh, not every two weeks. That'll be a bit much, but uh, uh, once a month will be fine. Yeah, yeah. Once a month will be fine. And and when you call them, just say, hey, uh, Joe, this is uh, Brian. Just calling to check up on you, uh, see how things are going. Has anything changed about your house situation? And then just yeah, uh, go from there, okay? Now, hey, can I ask you a really random question? I need two more minutes of your time. And I, like, Can you do a mock, like, first call, like cold call when you're calling people. I'm just kind of trying to gauge. When I call people, I'm like, hi, this is Brian. Um, you might have received one of my yellow postcards in the mail. And I'm calling you to check to see if, uh, you know, I, I have my script. But basically just kind of going through, like, I sent you a yellow postcard, calling to see if, um, and what we do is we buy houses. We buy them for cash with quick clothing, and things are very simple on your end. And just wondering if um, the house that you are, uh, house that you own is something that you might be interested in selling something along those lines. What is your spiel? Because I, I have the, the script that you sent, and I know you kind of, you probably have varied, varied that a little bit. What do you do, or what do you say? Yeah, so uh, basically I try to keep it simple. I try to keep it upbeat and whatnot, and I try to get the person on the other line to uh, talk more than I'm talking. So that's the biggest thing. You know, I get into the mode where I'm asking questions and not vice versa, you know, and where they're doing most of the talking and not me doing most of the talking, okay? So, like, let's say you call me back and you left me a message, hey, um, I have a house to sell at whatever address, okay? So I'm calling you back, right? right. Oh, ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, Hello? ring. Yeah, hey, Brian, how are you doing? It's Daniel. Just giving you a call. Uh, I'm returning your call about that uh, message you left about uh, potentially selling your house. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking to sell your house? Is that correct? Um, I got a postcard from you. I wasn't thinking about it, actually, but possibly. Okay. What would possibly make you want to sell your house, if you don't mind me asking? Um... If the price is right, really, if you're talking cash, I guess I'm interested in that, really. Okay, got it, got it. Well, we're definitely looking for uh, good deals, Brian. So uh, when we come in, uh, we're looking to make a win-win situation, okay? And so I actually have about 12 other calls that uh, I need to make tonight. And basically what we're doing is uh, we're looking to buy two more homes uh, this month cash. So if we can find a good deal and uh, good people to work with, uh, then we make a deal. Okay, so uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what type of condition is your house in? That's pretty good condition. Uh, uh, the tenants have been all right, so it's, it's average condition. Okay, like uh, what does average mean? Um, I probably need a new roof, um, probably need new paint inside, uh, a little bit of patching here then. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Have you ever thought about uh, listing it with a realtor to sell it, or? Um, not yet. I mean, I still get pretty good cash flow, so it's coming up. You know, I'm not chomping up a bit to sell it, so no. Uh, I hear you, I hear you. So how do you like being a landlord? Uh, I'm getting old now, so I'm getting kind of tired of it. So uh, that's why maybe I might be interested in selling it at some point. Got it, got it. Uh, what type of issues are you having with your tenants? Um, are they not paying on time? Or are they uh, giving you a hassle? Or what's going on? Uh, it more comes down to, you know, the, the house is a little bit older, so there's a lot of service work that needs to happen. And so trying to find reliable plumbers and all that is just something that I'm not really, 
I don't know, just get a little bit old. I'm just ready to kind of retire and relax and not have to deal with all the, the different properties. So. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. I totally hear you. I totally understand it. Yeah, because I know it can definitely be a drain to try to manage a bunch of different properties, especially if you're working and you're busy with your time. And you probably just want to get out there and go fishing and watch uh, TV, right? <laughs> Versus dealing with uh, tenants. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Do you ever have uh, those tenants uh, call you on a monthly basis saying, hey, the toll is broken, this needs fixing, anything like that? Yeah, that's what's starting to happen a lot more. And then, you know, the rent checks come a little bit later every once in a while. So it's, uh, you know. Oh, man, man, that stinks. Yeah, that, that really stinks when you get the rent checks coming in late. So yeah, definitely a lot of people that we've uh, dealt with and helped before in the past, Ryan, uh, they've been in your shoes where they've had tenants in their homes and the tenants are either not taking care of the house, they're tearing it down, or in most cases, just like in your scenario, Brian, they are a little bit late with uh, the money. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, there ain't nothing funny about you running me my money late, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so how many properties do you own? Uh, four. Four, okay, good deal. Are you uh, wanting to keep a couple of your properties or are you looking to eventually just sell them all so that you can keep on living your life? Um, at some point, sell them all, but I mean, it's still good cash flow right now. So that's why, you know, I might as well keep that money while I can. It's just, it's starting to, it's like the beginning of maybe getting a little bit too much, but you know, it's still good cash coming in. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, uh, just talking about this, uh, particular house that, uh, you're looking at selling, would it be fair for me to say that this is the house that is giving you the most problem? Yeah. Yeah, it would be. Okay, got it, got it. About how much is uh, your tenant in that house paying you each month? Uh, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Okay. And typically, how late are they with their payments? Uh, seven to ten days for the most part, and like they're you know on the seventh or the eighth of each month. And this would be the first. Ah, uh, got it, got it. And uh, let me ask you this, uh, Brian. About how much do you think it would take to? Um, Get your uh, that house into tip top condition to get it uh, re rented out. Uh, probably thirty thousand new roof and then paint thirty thirty five thousand probably. Okay, about thirty five thousand. All righty, good deal. Uh, now, if you were to boot that tenant out, or if they were to, you know, have to get evicted because let's say they just stop paying, which, you know, most ten uh, a lot of tenants do do that. Uh, would you be in a good situation to pay that $30,000 uh, repair? Uh, I'd have to move some money around, but and it'd, it'd take a little bit, but I, I guess I could. I, I, I wouldn't want to, though. Okay, definitely. I hear you because you're in it for the cash flow, right? That's correct. Okay. So let me ask you this. If we could come in, Brian, and I mean, you sound like a really good guy, um, and I definitely feel your pain. I've been talking with you for about the past 10 minutes. If we were to help you to alleviate that problem and just allow you to stay with your other properties that you have, you have good tenants in those properties, and I'm pretty sure that they keep your properties in good condition and they pay you on time. But this problem property, which is probably causing you a lot of stress, a lot of high blood pressure, if we were to come in cash for your property and do all the work so that you can just sit back, lay back, go fishing, go golfing, whatever it is you like to do, is that something that would make it a win-win situation for you? Yeah, the price is right, yeah. Okay. And what's the right price? Uh, and, 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 and keep in mind, Brian, uh, we're not pay we don't pay full price for your house because we're not going to live in it. So it has to be a win-win price that uh, – is a win for you, you're getting cash, and then a win for us, we're able to get in and make money and uh, all of that. Um, I mean, on Zillow, it says it's worth about 650000 So, uh, you know, take away the repairs, I don't know, maybe six, ten, six hundred, something around there. Okay, okay, got it. And typically, how long do properties last on the market before they get re rented out? Um, it's pretty quick here still. It's a pretty housing crisis, so I could probably find tenants in 
you know, I, I, I have, like right now I have tenants that they're not super bad and they pay rent. So that's why, and I don't raise their rent. So that's why I haven't found anybody. I could probably find new tenants in about a month that I can charge more, but I just don't feel like doing it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Um, is that the lowest that you can go? Um, probably. I mean, I feel like, you know, if, if Zillow is saying 650, 660, um, my neighbor down the street sold their house for, I think, 645 Um, And they just had an article saying that you know, the average price of a house here is a million dollars in San Jose. So um, probably, you know, 600 I mean, if you're talking cash, maybe, but I, I, I think that sounds about like a fair deal, 600 or so. Okay. Got it. Got it. Now, um, I'm looking on Zillow right now, Brian, and I'm seeing that there's a house about two blocks away from uh, your property that you're selling. And uh, typically, you, you know that uh, the prices of homes there uh, determined by what houses are selling for in that immediate area, right? Right. Okay. So I'm looking on Zillow right now, and I'm seeing the house right here on Jones Boulevard. It looks like it's selling for 480. I'm seeing another one for 475. I'm seeing another one for 510. Uh, what would make your property a better deal for a meat pickup versus uh, these homes? Um, I don't know. I have to. I'd have to look to see. You know, I guess like I just looked at Zillow, and that's what I was been basing it off of. So. Okay, got it, got it. Because definitely we're looking for the best deal. You know. Um, let me, Let me ask you this: If we were to. Uh, just get you out of the situation, okay? So, again, you know, I know that you're a bit older. You don't want to have to deal with all this foolishness that your tenants are putting you through. If we were to come in and just pay off your mortgage and uh, pay off what you owe on the property, is that something that you would even consider? Um, I don't have that much left, but, I mean, it would be nice. But... Um... I mean, I'm getting enough to pay for that right now with the cash flow from the, the tenants. So, I mean, I'd have to get, a, I mean, like I said, I, I feel like I can get 600000 at least for the house if I sell it with the realtor. So, mm-hmm. okay. I don't want to undercut myself too much. Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So, definitely um, keep in mind with the realtor, you're going to have to pay them 6% commission. So, right. basically, on a $600,000 house, you're going to be looking at paying them about uh, 45000 bucks in commissions. Right. Did you know that? Yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> that 6% doesn't come too cheap, does it, Brian? <laughs> no. And, um, and, you know, if you have a good realtor, they can typically get it sold in three to six months, okay? And uh, definitely the one thing that makes it hard for a realtor is to sell a property, Brian, and I mean, I'm sure you can uh, agree with this, is that if a person is currently renting out the property and they're living in it, if a realtor brings a prospective home buyer to that property, and let's say the the property is, you know, there's just a mess all over the place, you know, the your tenant has their clothes all over the place, or the lawn's unmowed, or, you know, there's, you know, crazy smells coming from the house because they haven't washed the dishes in days, that can definitely deter a uh, prospective home buyer from making an offer on your house, or it can make them come to uh, come back to you with a low offer, you know. And then this is in conjunction to the thirty thousand dollars in repairs that will be needed to update your house, you know. So that's something to consider as well, you know. And then you couple that with uh, your house may be on the market for three to six months. I mean, uh, is that something that you would want to deal with? Not really, not having people come in and out and having to try to figure out how to do open houses or get those guys out and clean up. I, not, not, not at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's starting to sound more like a headache, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Brian, uh, definitely, uh, again, when we do deals with our clients, 
we want to definitely make it a win-win situation, okay? So obviously, I want to make sure that you win. I want you, at the end of the day, to get cashed out. I want you to go out there fishing on the lake. I want you to go out there golfing. I don't want you to tap the fret, okay? You've lived your life, okay? Uh, you're not in your 20s or 30s anymore. You don't need to uh, be need to be stressing over people paying you your rent late or doing damage to your property, okay? Uh, this just gets you cashed out. Okay, and you know if you get a good lump sum of money, that would help you in uh, uh, comfort wise, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what uh, what would be your offer then? I mean, I would have to look at the property, you know, and so I'm just go basing this off of numbers and what I've heard from you over the phone. But I mean, if we can get somewhere, Brian, around the half a million dollar mark, okay that will be something that we could potentially do, okay? Now, I'm not making any promises because I still have 12 other people that I need to call tonight, and basically we, can, we only have funds to buy two properties, okay? So we definitely need to go after whoever gives us the best deal. But, I mean, the people that we do move on, Brian, I mean, we're going to cash them out. We're going to take the property in as-is condition, okay? Uh, we're not going to BS you around or put you through a bunch of drama. We're just going to uh, get you your money, do our title run, and then deal with your tenants. Okay, so basically I don't have to do anything. You guys just pay cash, that's it? Yeah, all you got to do is sign on the dotted line. Is that something you can do? Uh, definitely. I got time for my life, but that sounds, that, sounds, that sounds good to me. Okay, awesome, awesome. So let's – um, I have uh, some time here on Monday and Tuesday uh, that I'm going to get out there and look at houses. So uh, would Monday or Tuesday work better for uh, me meeting you and your wife to look at the house? How about Tuesday? Tuesday, okay. Uh, four or five o'clock. Five no, would be good. I'm sorry, say that again? Five would be good. Five will be good. Okay, great. So I will go ahead and pencil you in for five o'clock. And what I'm going to do, Brian, is I'm going to bring contracts, okay, to buy your property. If we come to an agreement that's uh, a mutual agreement, you know, between me, you, and your wife, that this is going to be a win-win situation for both of us, uh, I'm sorry, all three of us, then what we'll do is I will purchase your property right then and there, okay? We will sign the contract to buy it at X amount of dollars, okay? And what I will need for you to do, Brian, is if that does happen, I'll need you to bring a copy of your keys, okay, so that uh, my funding partners can go in there and do their inspections, all right? And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, do all the work, get the wheels in motion so that we can get you cashed out, okay? Okay. Okay. The one thing that you'll learn about me, Brian, is I don't like to BS around and I don't like to waste time. So uh, I don't get paid until uh, we get you cashed out, okay? So I want you cashed out quickly, and I'm pretty sure that you want to get cashed out quickly too, right? Right, yeah. All right, awesome, awesome. So we will meet on uh, Tuesday at uh, 4 o'clock, and then I'll bring uh, two sets of contracts, and one will be for me, one will be for you, if we do come to an agreement on the property. And then if we do, then you just bring a copy of the key, all right? And then um, I'll also give you, uh, just to make the contract valid, we need to give you at least $10 earnest money deposit to make the contract valid, okay? So if we do come to an agreement, then uh, we'll give you at least uh, $10 just to make the contract valid. Sound good? Okay. Sounds good. Right. Awesome, Brian. So you have a great day, man, and don't stress out too much over that property, okay? All right. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, bud. Bye. I like it. You make it sound way too easy, man. <laughs> 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 so the, I know I know the call supposed to be over. Oh, 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 and Brian, hey, hey, you, you gotta let me, you gotta let me uh, cut that portion of the call and put it on YouTube because I love, I love how that went. That was like way too perfect. Yeah, that was great. I, I feel like I want to make calls now because if they go like that, <laughs> <laughs> right? Real. Real quick, so two things. Um, the first thing was when I call, I'm fumbling around with words, and it's 
you just go straight to, so you're looking to sell your home, regardless of what they say in their voicemail. Just so you're looking to sell your home, and then they say yes or no. Well, and, and that's the thing, Brian. Like, um, the script that's in the Academy, it's, it's designed to give you a starting point. So I don't necessarily want you to, you know, be verbatim using the script. You know, because every situation is a bit different from another situation. And so you just have to, to feel out the, uh, the person on the other end of the line that you're talking to, right? And so if somebody is a bit, you know, they're not giving you a lot of information or they're kind of uh, giving you closed-ended questions, like that's, that's what you were doing with me at the beginning of the call. You're like, yes, no, yep. <laughs> you're giving me uh, answers that are short and to the point, right? And so for me to be, like, you know, uber-friendly with you and, like, just, you know, keep things sugary with you, that would make you more apprehensive of dealing with me, right? So basically, you were giving me a little bit of pushback. So because you gave me a little bit of pushback, I got to give you some pushback as well. So the pushback that I gave you, Brian, is, um, okay, well, hey, uh, what we're doing is we're looking to find uh, – uh, properties that are at a discounted price, okay? I want to make it a win-win situation, all right? Uh, but I do have 12 other people to call tonight, all right? And I only have funds to buy two properties this month. So whatever two deals that we get, uh, those are going to be the two deals that we roll with, okay? And uh, do you see what I did right there? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of urgency and I, you can get left behind type of thing, urgency. Exactly. You know, urgency, scarcity, and hey, Brian, if you want to play ball and get your house sold, then let's do it. But if not, then I don't need to waste my time with you. <laughs> that's basically what I'm saying. So <laughs> that's why I threw that out there. Typically, I would have thrown it out there that soon. Typically, I would throw that out there towards the second half of the call. But because you were a bit uh, standoffish to me, I pulled back a little bit. Okay. Um, because when you pull back, that makes a person naturally more inclined to chase you, okay? But if you chase somebody, that makes them inclined to pull back from you, okay? So it's always, yeah. it, it's kind of like a game, you know? And you got to be able to assess what the, the uh, person on the other line is thinking, all right, but based off of uh, the words that they're saying, all right? And so uh, basically what I did next after that was I tried to uh, pinpoint what is your pain? Why are you trying to sell the property, you know? Because in the beginning of the call, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm just thinking about selling it. You know, I don't know. I may not want to sell it, all right? And so I, I can't have you at that point <laughs> because you're not going to sell me the house at a discounted price if you're just saying, hey, I, just, I, I may want to sell the house. I don't know. You know, I need to see what your pain point is. So, so I was like, okay, well, why are you looking at someone else? Why don't you just keep it? <laughs> or why don't you just bring it to the realtor? You know, like, <laughs> you tell me, what's the problem? Because <laughs> obviously, yeah, obviously you called me, so what, what are you looking at doing? Like, what, is there a problem? You know, and if there's no problem, then why are we on this call? Why did you... Uh, call my postcard, you know. Obviously, you did want to sell your house because there's some type of pain that you're having. And then we uncover that pain. You said, okay, well, yeah, I have a tenant. Um, and the tenant's, you know, paying me late. And, you know, it's going to cost me $30,000 uh, to uh, get the house back in good condition. And obviously, the thing that can be implied by that is a tenant that is paying you late they're probably more likely, uh, they're probably likely to get evicted by you in the near future, number one, or number two, they may be a tenant that just disappears on you in the middle of the night and they escape, okay? So if that does happen, you have a cost that you need to pay to evict them, all right, through the court system. And even if they evict themselves and leave in the middle of the night, I mean, you've lost money. You're not going to get your rental payments. You're not going to get your $2,500 a month rental payment. Um, you are going to have to spend $30,000 out of your own money to get the house back in good condition. All right? You're looking to cash flow. You're not looking to spend $30,000 uh, plus to, to get your property back in good standing. You know, you're older. You know, you want to chill. You want to go play golf. You want to go chase, you know, 
hot young girls at the beach or something. I don't know. You know, you want to smoke on your bong. I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to deal with uh, with properties like that, you know, that are stressing you out. You know what I'm saying? And so basically you find a person in their pain, Brian, and you just stir it around, and then you just make that pain more evident to them, and you uh, allow them to visualize that pain, all right? And then that puts them in a place where they're like, God dang, I do want to sell the house, right? And then, and, and then you see how you, uh, we're talking about realtors, and you're like, I may just listen with a realtor. All right, well, hey, that's fine, but, you know, you're trying to sell your house for $600,000. Uh, typical realtor is going to charge you 6% um, in commission fees, all right? So that right there, off of a $600,000 house, 6% is uh, 36000 bucks. You know, did you take that into account? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you take into account that uh, prospective home buyers are not going to want to pay you full price for a house that you know has you know somebody's old crappy couches and belongings in there, and the house looks you know in not so good shape, and and he's thirty thousand dollars in repairs in it, and you know the house may not look uh, visually presentable. Right, right, and the realtor may. Uh, have issues uh, arranging with the tenant to show the property. You know, that's that's a lot of headaches. Yeah, and we can take all of the way right now to do the cash. One one other question about that, because that makes sense. That, the other question was, at what point during this did you ask for their address? Because obviously I don't have their address. You just have their phone number. And so you, at one point in the call, you're like, well, I'm pulling up your address. Or I'm pulling up a comp to see, you know, this house, the house is next to you actually sold for blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Um, are you are you saying can you are, are you asking from the very beginning? Can you actually give me your address because I don't have it, or is there a slick way for you to ask for that? Well, I'm assuming that uh, you left me the address on the voicemail. That's what I was assuming at the beginning of the call. But even if you did, it, even if you just said, "Hey, this is Brian. Uh, have a house on May. Think I'm thinking about selling. Uh, call me back." That's this number, okay? I call you back and be like, uh, hey, Brian, how you doing? It's Daniel. Oh, yeah, yada, 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 yada. All right, just give me a call back because you left me a message about potentially selling your house. Oh, yeah, 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 yada, 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 yada. yada. Okay, great, great. And uh, what's the address of the property? And then that's how I would ask it. Okay, that, that's simple. Simple, yeah. Yeah, so always get into a point of asking things uh, nonchalantly, okay? And I think, like, with your, with the way you are and your personality, Brian, you probably um, ask these things nonchalantly anyways. You don't really beat around the bush, you know, uh, which is good. So, um, and, and even with me uh, um, saying, hey, bring a copy of your keys and we're going to sign agreements if we agree on the price and I'm going to give you a $10 earnest money deposit, I say that at the end and I say it very nonchalantly. I say it like, hey, this is the typical way of doing business just so that uh, when we do meet up and if we do agree on price, there's no surprises. Right, got it. You know, you already know, hey, uh, who are signing contracts? You need to give me a copy of the key, and I'm only giving you $10 earnest money deposit. So you're not going to come back at me and be like, well, hey, I'm going to need $20,000 earnest money deposit. No, screw that. You're not getting that. <laughs> we already told you over the phone, 10 bucks. Right. 10 bucks, boss. <laughs> All right. So. I feel a lot better, Simo. Because uh, I was, yeah, my intro, I always just fumble. Uh, you, you got my yellow postcard, uh, 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 where, you know, uh, and I just, that just ruins it from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I mean, feel free to free flow, Ryan. So um, you don't need to be spot on with the script, you know. Uh, the key things for you to cover is, uh, number one, build rapport at the beginning of the call. And then make sure you get them to name a price. Uh, a quick price, you know, at the beginning of the call. Okay, great. Um, ask them why are they potentially thinking about selling the house? Uh, what's going on? Okay. And try and ask them in as many different angles as possible. All right. Just so that you can get a better picture of uh, what's going on. And your job from that point, Brian, is to uh, discover the pain. Okay. Why are you looking at selling it? You know, well, that doesn't sound so bad. Why don't you keep it? You know, if they. If they don't give you any pain points, then uh, you challenge them. And you say, okay, well, well sounds like a good property. You, why won't you just keep it? You know? And when you say that, I mean, if they're truly wanting to sell the house, they're going to tell you what the truth is. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's like, okay, well, I'm disinterested now. You know, you're not telling me nothing, so I'm kind of disinterested. Why don't you just keep it? Why are you on the phone talking? You're wasting my time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you don't say that, but <laughs> but you apply it, you know. And uh, why are we on this call? <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, and, and you just go from there. And then towards the end of the call, um, you definitely want to let them know, uh, all right, uh, this is what I'm doing. I am looking for discounted properties. We pay all cash, close quickly. We take your house in as is condition, okay? Um, I have about 12 or 15 more calls to make, and basically we are looking to buy two more properties here in the next uh, 30 to 45 days, okay? And so whatever the best deals are that we can find, uh, those are going to be the deals that we roll with. That's what you imply to them. And then, I'm sorry, that's what you, what you tell them. And then after you say that spiel, you let them know. So uh, that being said, if we were to uh, uh, consider purchasing your property, Brian, and we pay all cash for it, take it in as is condition, um, what's the lowest you can take for it? You know, and you you try to ask them that twice, okay? And then they give you a price, and then you just say, uh, Hmm, okay, $50,000. Um, is that the best you can do? And you sound a bit yeah. interested, you know? And uh, as long as you can get them into a, a decent range, you know, somewhere where it's not crazy, uh, then uh, book an appointment with them, okay? So if you know for a fact that the property, is, uh, you need to have it at around $400,000, and they're not budging below eight hundred thousand dollars, then that's a no deal. You know, you just let them know. Okay, well, it may be in your best interest to get with a realtor, and you you tell them, hey, this is what the costs are going to be with uh, dealing with a realtor, right? Uh, right? But let's say they're somewhat in the ballpark. So let's say some uh, you need to have them at four hundred thousand dollars, and they say, oh, well, I can potentially sell it for about five hundred thousand. Okay, well, yeah, let's go ahead and book the appointment. Okay, because when you go to the property and you start going through there and looking at things. Uh, you can say, oh, well, this, okay, well, it seems like you have some structural damage here that may uh, it may need some peering down here in the foundations. Peering can definitely be expensive, and you're marking it down, okay? And when you do the walkthrough, that $500,000 can easily dwindle down to $400,000 out there in California for you. Right. That's, so that's the, the area that I picked is um, houses are pretty much right at six fifty. So, on on Zillow at least, and I was about to ask you, what's the website that there's a call where the guy runs comps like three or four weeks ago that he uses along with Zillow to find comps? Do you remember off the top of your head what site that was? Uh, say that again. There, uh, there's a call like three or four weeks ago, and the guy talks about comps and how what he uses to find his comps, and there's a website that he used um, along with Zillow to kind of figure out the the you know like. This is how much this house is sold for. Do you know what site? Do you know off the top of your head what site that was? Yeah, I mean, you can use Redfin and Trulia. Um, I think he, uh, we've been using uh, Chase. So Chase and Berkshire Hathaway. And you just Google uh, property value estimator, and it should pull those sites up. Okay. Um, so for, you know, if a property here is about 650 I should be trying to get it, what, about four fifty, five hundred? Uh potentially. You know, you gotta run the numbers, uh, so I don't have the I don't have my calculator in front of me. But uh potentially, yeah. I mean typically with most properties we try to get them at uh fifty percent of the uh the price. But I mean when you're dealing with higher price properties, then you have a little bit more of a leeway. Right. Okay. So off of a six hundred thousand dollar property um, instead of using um, seventy percent or sixty-five percent of ARV, you can go a little bit higher. You can uh, test out doing seventy-five or eighty percent of the ARV. Okay. Okay. And then uh, uh, take away for the estimated repairs, and then take away for the amount of money that you want to make on the deal. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I got this one lady that called last night. I'm going to give her a call now and see if I can try your spiel and. See if I can wrangle something and go from there. All right, cool deal, man. Yeah, yeah, just uh, be confident, man, and just uh, talk with her, build up that rapport, man, and uh, uh, we'll make her do most of the talking. So. 
Yeah, I think that'd be very helpful for everybody, just having a mock call session like that, because that was awesome. That's what I was hoping for. So, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you too, man. So, all right, go make some money. All right, man. All right. Don't forget, yes, don't forget the beer gold. I'm about to beat you in about three, four months. So <laughs> hey, bring it. <laughs> all right, bye.